Lexus shocked the world when they greenlit the production of the all-new LC500 Coupe two years ago at the Detroit Auto Show. Now, last year, I also had the opportunity to fully test out the LC500 equipped with the 5-liter V8. And since then, this car has really been changing the perception of Lexus, particularly for the enthusiast market. Now, this week, they sent me over the hybrid version of this car. It's essentially a multi-stage hybrid V6 with a two-motor electric system and a lithium-ion battery, a first for a Lexus product. So is this hybrid version of the LC just as good as the V8? That's what we're here to find out. So it's a well-known fact that in recent years, Lexus has really been polarizing a lot of consumers with their designs. And the LC was technically one of the first designs from Lexus that actually works. This is a car that seriously attracts a lot of stares. When I had the V8 model last year, uh, it got a lot of people to look and ask questions about this car, and the hybrid version does the exact same thing. Compared to the gas model, there's really no differentiation in the styling. You have the corporate spindle grille at the front that really works on this particular vehicle. It's got these L-shaped LED headlights, which are full LEDs. They're the triple beam design with an LED turn signal. Um, that really, the only thing that gives it away is the hybrid is the blue Lexus badge in the center. Other than that, it looks pretty much identical to the gas model. Now, first of all, when you look at it from the front profile here, this vehicle is low and wide, which is a nice signature design element for any performance luxury coupe. It looks exactly like the LFLC concept that we saw in Detroit uh, back in 2012. Now, one particular differentiation between the gas model that I had last year, this one has the 20 inch wheels, which are an inch smaller. You can still get the 21 inch wheels if you guys want. They're wrapped in a bridge stone run flat tires, 245s in the front. You still have six piston Brembo calipers in the front, four pistons in the rear. They're serious sports car brakes for a performance car. Now, this car, as you guys know, first introduced the global architectural luxury platform. Its wheelbase is around 113 inches long. It's about 187 inches long in overall length, about the exact same size as an Aston Martin DB11, the new uh, flagship coupe uh, from Aston Martin. Now at the rear, again, the styling is also very similar to the V8 model, which is a good thing. One thing that this op this car is missing is the performance package, so it doesn't have that deployable rear spoiler, which I really liked. Instead, you just have a blue Lexus badge here with the H and then the blue badging around the 500 to kind of show this is the hybrid model. Other than that, you still have these very three-dimensional like LED tail lights that kind of have an, a look that kind of goes deep. Um, it looks really uh, fantastic. You still have dual exhaust outlets here, which are kind of a signature gear, uh, garnish piece. Uh, although it does actually function, it goes through to the actual exhaust. Um, really, I don't. I have trouble finding an ugly angle of this car. It looks absolutely stunning and just different from all the different looks. Although I do particularly love the rear with these specialized tail lights. Now the trunk capacity. This is still a Grand Touring Coupe. Um, Lexus didn't reduce the size from the gas model. It's really just around 4.7 cubic feet of space, which is very Miata-like in size. However, I will say that I was able to fit two large travel duffel bags in this vehicle, which you can't do on a Miata. And the space is pretty much similar to the gas model, so you're not really losing anything uh, when you guys go for the hybrid. So just like the gas LC, when you approach the hybrid, it makes a very strong first impression. This is just one immensely gorgeous car. And in typical Lexus fashion, being the flagship coupe in the lineup, it does come standard with the company's smart key access system with push button start. You can see the key fob has a blue Lexus badge to remind you that this is the hybrid. No actual remote start on the key fob, but if you guys go into the Lexus Inform app, you can start the car uh, via that way remotely. Now, um, I have the mirrors to electrically fold when you push the lock button here, you can see the mirrors fold in. It has a nice little soft beep to indicate that it's locked. And then when you approach the LC, you're gonna also see that it has the same door handles as the gas model. Um, the door handle itself, it pops out. So when you hit the unlock button, the door handles pop out, it reveals the Lexus badge. To open it, just kind of pull on that. If you wanna lock the door, just kind of push the door handle in. When you have the key fob in or on you, that'll unlock the door. Or to unlock it, you can kind of just push the door handle out. Uh, like that and it'll pop out to reveal the door handle then you can just pull it to open it now looking at the interior of this particular one you can see this is the black interior with the contrasting white stitching it is my least favorite interior color option um, lexus offers like five different colors there's also a toasted caramel which is like a 
brown beige leather, there's the Roja red, and then there's a white interior option, which is like a $1,200 option, part of a touring package. This interior, to me, just doesn't show off the intricate details that make this interior so lovely. And it's one of the Lexus Strong Suit is a really nice interior. You can see there's lots of gorgeous little shapes and textures. There's some Alcantara, really soft materials. There's real aluminum. The seats themselves, they are 12-way power adjustment, but there's no a massage function. I'm surprised that Lexus doesn't offer that. They are heated and cooled though, which is actually not standard. You have to add a touring package to get the heated and cooled seats or a sport package. But nonetheless, these particular seats are not the sport seats that I showed you in that white gas model, which had the suede Alcantara. They are supremely comfortable, covered in really soft leather. Now, when you step inside the interior of the LC, you're gonna notice it's a low slung coupe. So that's gonna remind you every time, which is fine with me. Everything else just sits up way too high nowadays. Now, when you shut the door, it sounds pretty solid. This is part of the Toyota Global Architectural Luxury Platform. It's the first vehicle to show that. Uh, I showed you guys that in the LS as well, the all new LS sedan. Now, when you just wanna start the vehicle up, just keep the key fob in here. Push this little blue power button here to turn everything on. Now, of course, you can see here, the screens kind of do a little uh, cute little startup here with the graphics. And then with this being the hybrid model, there is no engine noise. So that is kind of a disappointment. If you guys remember how much I loved the V8 of the gas model, this one, if you touch the gas, it doesn't actually, it starts the engine up finally, but you can't actually rev the engine out. So uh, we'll have to go into how the engine sounds, the powertrain sounds when we go into the test drive. Looking at the rest of this interior, you can see here, this is the upgraded 10.3 inch Lexus Inform 2.0 display. Um, it's not a touch screen, of course, you can't reach that. You have to use the remote touch interface here, the mouse. And then this uh, gauge cluster here is very similar to the gas model. Um, it does have uh, this little button here where you can push that makes the gauges move, which is really cool. It also changes colors depending on the drive mode. If you wanna flick this little switch here up, it goes into a sport, a sport plus, flick it down, it goes to a comfort and then an eco mode, and then push this button here, it goes into a normal. For the majority of my drive, I'll probably leave it in Sport Plus just because I like the white gauges. Uh, I actually didn't find too much discernible difference between the modes, especially in this hybrid trim. The interior materials in here are first rate, of course. It's all soft touch leather here on the upper portion, soft touch right here, soft touch leather again, covering this area here where there's a nice little grab handle. The glove compartment, you push this little button here, it opens up. It's a little on the small side, but it's damped. It's lined with felt. Um, there are a couple of cup holders here. There's one cup holder right here that opens up. And then if you wanna push this forward here, it reveals another cup holder and a little bit of storage. This little area Area right here will open up to reveal a decent sized storage with uh, a USB port, an aux port, and a power outlet right there. Now I'm gonna got, I'm not gonna go too much in debt with the Lexus Inform uh, remote touchpad controller. It hasn't received much love from the industry, um, and I have to say, you know, after spending a week with this car, you do get used to the interface and how it works. I do like the dedicated menu button there that'll bring up, you know, all the different sources it has. It works just like a computer, where this gives you haptic feedback. You can adjust how the sensitivity of the feedback and and how quick the cursor actually moves. Um, but again, some people have complained that this just doesn't work for them. I don't particularly love it. I'm waiting to see how Acura's new system works in the RDX to, before I really uh, talk about if it's uh, this is much worse than what Acura has done. But again, the layout is fine. The map graphics, as you can see, uh, they're also fine. They are typical Lexus. They haven't really upgraded it here. Uh, even the new LS has just a bigger 12 inch display. This to me is the weakest aspect of the LC. Uh, and there's still no Apple CarPlay and still no Android Auto. Uh, the Lexus UX will be the first Lexus product to include those two features. Over here, you can see there is dual zone automatic climate control. One thing I don't like about this car is to access the cooled seat function or the heated seat function, there's no dedicated hard button here. You have to go into the uh, menu display here and then go to climate, climate right here and then go to seat. Go all the way over here to the seat option, which again, just too many steps um, to turn this on. They should have just included a physical hard button there or some kind of quicker way to access it as opposed to going through all those different buckets and whatnot. I love this big volume knob here that adjusts the volume. There's a tuning wheel here, a seek wheel here. There's lots of shortcut buttons, a back button. So they've thought it through here. Um, they just need to rework the interface. now. This shifter, this, is ha this has a very interesting transmission, as I said. It's a multi-stage transmission, so it pairs up a four-speed automatic with a CVT to simulate a 10-speed transmission. Uh, the transmission itself, I like the way it works. You, you have to kind of first go to the left, push up for reverse, 
that will reveal the backup camera that has the trajectory um, and distance markers. No 360 camera available in this car, which is surprising considering how low this thing is. I'm surprised Lexus hasn't included that. To go into drive, push it to the left again, and then poke it, pull it all the way back uh, for drive. And then for park, just push this button here. That will go into park. There's also a brake hold function. EV function allows you to drive this vehicle in electric only mode uh, up to a certain speed when the hybrid battery is fully charged. So of course there are certain limitations there. Now this door panel material here, it is soft touch just like the dashboard. It's covered in more suede Alcantara. The windows are one touch automatic for both. There's power folding mirrors, three person memory, a nice sturdy aluminum door handle. The steering wheel still has these magnesium paddle shifters so you can access the uh, 10 virtual gears that the CVT and four-speed automatic give you the steering wheel itself it's electric it's uh tilt telescoping by power it feels really nice the leather feels really good the gauges look good my tester is missing the uh, head-up display that the gas model had which is still like a thousand dollar option i do like the frameless rearview mirror it's very classy and then one thing my tester has is also the glass roof which is nice which the gas model didn't have uh it has a little sunshade here that's not power and you can't actually open this i'm sad that you can't open this i wish lexus allowed you to open it uh, but it does let in some cabinets uh, some light into this cabin, especially when you go for this particularly dark interior that this uh, one has. But overall, the interior is still very impressive. I would go for a light color option or the red option. Uh, and I'm hoping that Lexus will eventually add features like a 360 camera, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. My tester is also missing a heated steering wheel that's part of a cold weather package. But nonetheless, nevertheless, the rest of this interior is just absolutely uh, delightful. So if you can believe it, the LC is actually a two plus two vehicle. There are small back seats back there and to entertain you guys, I'm gonna show you guys how to get back there. Now, like every other coupe, there's a little lever here that you can pull that slides the seat forward and it actually will electrically push the seat uh, forward only on this side. And as you guys can see, the seat belt comes out here to kind of gives you, give you a little bit more space. Now I'm five foot seven, so I'm pretty short, but let me get back here and see how the actual space is. Ooh, okay. so. It's got this cute little tiny floor mat here, which is <laughs> one of the smallest I've ever seen. Now, you can see here, I'm gonna put the seat, I'm gonna leave the seat forward actually, because I don't want it to get in the way. Um, this is what the seat moved all the way forward. So you're obviously gonna have to move the seat up to give passengers in the back some more room. And the sloping roof here is requiring me to seriously tilt my head to the left because if I tilt it to the right, there's less space. So this is really, really ridiculous. This back seat is not really usable for anybody that's over five foot five because I'm five foot seven. You really only wanna put small children back here um, or people you don't like or packages because there are there are seriously no space back here. Now, the batteries actually live between the rear seat and the trunk, so this seat back does not fold down, unfortunately. Um, but to be honest, this is pretty much um, not usable. Uh, I would recommend getting something like a Mercedes S-Class Coupe or a Porsche 911 if you actually need to put people in the back seats. So underneath the long hood of the LC500H, this is the biggest differentiation between the gas model, obviously. Instead of that lovely five liter V8, we have a 3.5 liter V6 that runs on the Atkinson cycle for efficiency. It's very similar to the V6 you'll find in like a Toyota Highlander Hybrid or the Lexus GS450H. Now on its own, this V6 makes 295 horsepower, which is it's naturally aspirated and 257 foot pounds of torque. Now when you combine it with the electric motor with the lithium ion batteries, it makes a combined 354 horsepower uh, and Lexus doesn't claim the torque outputs with the electric motor combined, they tend to do that. Now this vehicle does weigh about 100 pounds more than the gas model and it's paired with a very unique transmission. It's unique to the LC and the upcoming LS500H as well. It's a four speed automatic paired with a CVT to combine to create a 10 speed transmission, which is definitely interesting. It's uh, one of the reasons what makes the LC hybrid one of the most unique driving hybrids I've ever driven. Uh, it's something that I'll definitely be showing you guys out in the test drive. Now this vehicle, as I said, weighs around 100 pounds more than the V8. It gets considerably better gas mileage rated at 26 in the city, 35 on the highway. That's a 11 horsepower or 11 MPG increase over the V8 in case you guys care. It does run on premium gas. So just because you get the hybrid, do not put regular in this car. It still runs on premium. Uh, this vehicle is only rear wheel drive. You can still get it with a limited slip differential if you guys want. Uh, but let's get it out on the road and see how it all performs, shall we? So it's been a few months since I drove an LC and you guys remembered I fell in love with that V8. So my expectations are quite high for the hybrid. Let's be honest, I don't particularly love the way hybrids drive. But if there's one company that really knows hybrids, it's Toyota and Lexus. So let's see if this new flagship hybrid system will impress me. 
So every, like every other hybrid, it starts up in the traditional way. There's no drama, there's no noise. There's a little icon in the display that says ready when this vehicle's ready to drive, which is kind of disappointing considering if you've driven the V8, you've tried the V8, the noises the V8 makes, um, you know, the fact that this doesn't make any noise is a little bit annoying. But um, first setting off in the LC, um, I switched it over to sport mode and the engine kind of fires up to life. This is a multi-stage hybrid system. So uh, as I said earlier, the um, car is capable of running on electric power alone, which you can do if you put it into its eco mode here. Right now I don't have the battery with enough charge, so it's not gonna actually allow me to creep along in full EV mode, but this will, it will basically creep around like creep along like a Prius, making no noise, kind of similar to the way the Acura NSX drove. Um, but let me just actually leave it in comfort eco mode right now because we're gonna go over kind of this bumpy section of road here and test out the ride quality. Now this car has the smaller 20 inch wheels as opposed to the bigger 21 inch wheels. It also doesn't have the rear wheel steering because it's missing the performance package, which I'm kind of going to miss, I feel like, but nonetheless, this car glides down the road like a Lexus. Now it's not gonna be super soft and squishy like the old Lexus uh, products. It still feels relatively firm. The 20 inch wheels, surprisingly, don't transmit too much harshness. The suspension soaks up the bumps. It's a relatively, you know, quiet car as well. Actually, it's a really quiet car considering this has no noise. So that's another indication that you're driving something a little bit different than the regular model and just kind of creeping along. It doesn't really inspire much. So the visibility in here is pretty good. You have a good view out of the front, big side mirrors. I also like the design of them. The view out of the back is a little obscured, but um, you're just gonna have to get used to how low and wide this car is, which is technically a good thing. It's a car that reminds you that you're driving a sports car per se. Now let's switch it over to its sport plus setting. Uh, I've had enough of the eco mode. Let me put my foot down here a little bit. Whoa. Hold on a second. We're gonna try that one more time from a dead stop. I'm gonna turn off the stability control, see if that makes a slight difference here. <laughs> that is the weirdest, weirdest noise I have heard in a long, long time. But the V6, I will say, sounds really good. Um, you know, unlike typical buzzy, four cylinders that we just hate with hybrid systems. This is a silky three and a half liter V6 that runs on the Atkinson cycle. It's naturally aspirated. It makes almost 300 horsepower on its own. <laughs> wow, yeah, that's uh, really responsive. I was not expecting that kind of pull. Listen to that. It shrills, it screams. That sounds really good. Now, of course, it doesn't sound as good as the V8, but the transmission, this is my first time driving a four-speed auto paired with a CVT. And honestly, I forget that it's a CVT. It actually will shift most of the time, which is really nice. Um, wow. This car, if you've never driven a hybrid before and you drive this, you're probably gonna think, wow, do all hybrids drive like this? Because it drives nice. This will change your perception of the way a hybrid is supposed to drive. And I give kudos to Lexus for really you know, challenging that notion. This is truly an, an, an interesting, if not peculiar, peculiar driving car. So much torque off the line because of that electric motors. It's nice. Wow. I am very impressed. And this thing still feels pretty quick, honestly. <laughs> oh, God. Now, Lexus claims this car will get to 60 in 4.7 seconds with the hybrid powertrain. It's actually only a tick slower, like three tenths slower than the gas powered V8. And you know what? This thing feels really quick when you first step off the line, whenever you're looking for power, just put your foot down. The transmission is so quick to snap into a better ratio. And listen to that. <laughs> that sounds great. I have to admit, you know, as much as I wanted to hate on the hybrid powertrain, um, it's got its own unique special character. Now, of course, as an enthusiast, would I still choose the V8? Yes, I would. Although that's because you know, I don't really drive too much. You know, I don't really have to care about the noise too much. Um, if you guys have longer commutes and you want something that is still stylish, sexy looking, still quick, uh, and you need to save money on gas, this hybrid could make, you know, a good point for itself. It gets 12, 11 miles per gallon better than the gas V8. And that's a big significant difference. Now, 
I don't usually talk about fuel economy so quickly, but I will say that in my you know first initial days of driving this thing, I got 20 miles per gallon in the city, which is far lower than the 26 that Toyota, or I'm sorry, that Lexus says this will get. Um, however, that is about five miles per gallon better immediately right off the bat versus the gas model. And on the highway, uh, I did get this up to about 32 miles per gallon, which is really good fuel economy for a car like this. I mean, this is essentially stuff that you're gonna get you know, in a compact car. And honestly, if you guys are a little bit more conservative, I have a heavy right foot to show you guys you know how this drives and whatnot and just because it's something that's cool looking like this I want to go fast um, my lead foot would probably you know eat up more gas you should easily be able to clear you know 35 miles per gallon on the highway if you guys drive this thing really nicely now let's talk a little bit about the handling of this car because um, it doesn't have the rear wheel steering and this car is also heavy it weighs almost 4,500 pounds it's 150 pounds heavier than the gas model but a car like this shouldn't handle as well as it does and this is where the LC will definitely surprise anyone who's ever driven it the steering is quick direct sharp it has relatively good feedback also for an electric power steering assist now do I notice the lack of the rear wheel steering um it's hard to tell I'd have to get this on a racetrack but just driving you know this on a, your favorite back road whatnot you're not gonna really notice that difference it's still a very planted car. Uh, it has a very confidence inspired handling. It has that balanced rear drive chassis that you're gonna love so much. And it just is incredible. It, it really reminds you that Lexus can and still uh, can build a luxury sport coupe like this to compete can, can compete with the best uh, from Europe, um, from you know other Japanese brands with the best from America. I mean, this is a world-class car. <laughs> Look at that. Spinning tires in a hybrid. Gotta love that. You can't do that in other hybrids, that's for sure. <laughs> now, you will notice the LC's weight when you really start pushing it, but man, this is a car that will put a huge, huge smile on your face. It'll get up to speed quickly. And I just, I'm wondering what Lexus is gonna do to this car for the coming years. I mean, I'd love to see a convertible version. I'd love to see an even higher performance F version, which they say is coming with a twin turbo V8 and 600 plus horsepower. So this is a world-class car and the hybrid should not be ignored. Even if you're an enthusiast, you gotta, you know, you have to try the V8, but if you really need something that can save a little bit of gas that isn't that much slower than the V8, and the only thing you're really giving up is that exhaust no noise. I mean, this car doesn't make any noise at a startup, which could be a good thing if you guys are trying to creep out of your driveway late at night without waking up your neighbors or waking up your spouse and whatnot. But man, this car is just one unbelievable car. It's what I think to be one of the best new cars to come out in general uh, for 2018. In today's world, the segment for performance, luxury, grand touring coupes is definitely shrinking, and the LC still fits into a nice space in this relatively small segment. When I tested the V8 model last year, I fell in love with its engine, with its handling, with its styling. So what can I say of the LC500H after spending a week with the hybrid version? I have to admit, the hybrid version is a very tempting car as well. It fits into a very unique white space in the segment. There's really nothing else quite like it. Um, as you guys saw, it drives really interestingly with that combined multi-mode transmission. Uh, the V6 makes a decent synthesized noise. It's relatively quick at 4.7 seconds to 60, uh, and really it still handles pretty well. You don't really notice it, and if again, if you want to make this handle a little bit better, you can add the performance package that this particular one is missing that gives you the limited slip diff and the rear active steering. Really, what disappoints me the most about the LC500H is the sound or lack thereof. Um, you can't really rev it up from a stop like you can for the V8, and if Lexus is going to take away that lovely V8 noise, they have to give me something in return. I think what they should have done is they should have made this a plug-in hybrid, given it a stronger electric motor so it's actually quicker than the V8 off the line, because if you're gonna take away the noise, you need to give me back some speed, especially um, you know, with a lot of luxury buyers. There's a reason why Tesla sells so well, it's because their cars are so lightning fast from a stop. Uh, and I think the reason why the LC500H is not gonna do particularly well with enthusiasts, uh, and people are just gonna go for the V8 for that particular reason. Now, so what's it gonna to cost to put the LC500H in your driveway? This starts at around $4,500 more than the V8, ouch. Um, around $96,500. It's still a lot of money, but right in line with a lot of its competitors. This one is pretty lightly optioned. 
Um, it just has the glass roof, the convenience package that adds like the blind spot monitoring. Everything else pretty much comes standard. This one's a tick over $100,000, which again is a lot of money. But I will just say, save that $4,500, go for the V8, add the performance package. It makes this a truly exceptional card. I'm really looking forward to seeing what Lexus is gonna do to this car in the coming years. They're promising a convertible. They're promising a performance model with over 600 horsepower. So stay tuned. This is just the first chapter of a full lineup of performance cars from Lexus. I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on this 2018 LC500H. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, make sure you follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook. And as always guys, keep subscribed to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.